Those guys are a little bit smaller. All right. Are you ready to go? Yeah, we're, we're live. Amazing. Okay. So, hello, everyone. I'm Shark300, and I am talking with Merrick DeVille, if that is your real name. So, could you, could you uh, introduce yourself, give us a little rundown of who you are, you know, uh, what you do, what you like, shoe size, you know, just the normal stuff. Oh, okay. <laughs> I didn't. Uh, I didn't know we were doing that in this chat. Uh, my, name is, my name is. Usually, I get paid for this. My name is Merrick Deville. I am a notorious Twitter hoe, um, and by that I mean uh, I am a sex worker who uh, regularly gets all of Twitter very angry. So, notorious Twitter hoe. I have a YouTube channel that I have recently started uh, streaming on and uploading stuff to again, um, and yeah. That's that's about what I've got going on. Sounds great. Sounds great. So I knew. So I found out about you not too long ago. It, I think it was a little bit before um, the notorious uh, uh, gun girl arc, um, and that uh, for for me personally in my life that material that uh, you know dissipated as soon as it material like as quick as it material uh, materialized, um, and I know that had like a a whole bunch of fallout um, in there. But I wanted to start. Uh, here um like like i said lots of people bring you on when it comes to sex work i know that's your uh specialty uh that and and you like to talk about that but i haven't heard you speak on uh, online harassment too much and that's something that i like to tackle every now and again uh i i, I have some pet projects that i like to uh talk about men's rights is one of them and online harassment is another and i i know um mel had a very uh, interesting exchange with you on a on the last debate panel but we'll uh get into that in just a moment. So I, first question that I'd love to level levy to you right now would be, um, uh, can you give us a little rundown of your experiences when it comes to online harassment and the leftist community, uh, especially on Twitter, since, uh, you know, you interact with the uh, godforsaken Twitter people? Yeah, so um, I think it's important to note that <clears throat> I am in a very unique situation, I think, uh, as far as online harassment goes, because I have, um, I guess people consider what my Twitter following to be a platform. Um, so at one point, I had 30,500 Twitter followers. So now I've fallen down to 26,000, but people still consider it to be a platform. And so um, this happened to me pretty much overnight. I went from having a hundred Twitter followers at the beginning of August to having 30,500, uh, in the middle of September. And with that came a ton of attention. Um, and I think, you know, obviously because my tweets were reaching a lot more people, but also because, I mean, that's an insane amount of growth, right? So there was a lot of attention and a lot of eyeballs directed my way. Um, a lot of people really didn't like that. They were really, really unhappy that I had seen this growth. Um, and when I started, you know, getting a sizable amount of followers, I started getting a lot of um, people being upset about my sex work. And initially this came in the form of just like dirtbag lefties. Um, quote tweeting like cute little stuff that I would say and mocking it. And then it started getting into um, people from other parts of the world getting really upset with me because they thought that my like cutesy girl next door, girlfriend, um, sex worker online interactions with people were making a mockery of communism and making a mockery of the global South. So they felt that it was very offensive. Um, and I, I guess it, it started spiraling from there to where um, people were dis had decided that my body was making other girls uncomfortable and that um, my openly being a sex worker and having the following I did and also talking about politics with people who um, tended to be in, in other, you know, other people's communities as well that uh, I was inviting a sort of, um, I guess that I was inviting predators into the left because I was openly a sex worker, then that means that um, because of men seeing my content, that men were going to go out and harass other women. And so I was making women unsafe. And so it kind of started with, it started with all this, which I think, you know, we can see 
is is pretty obviously just a lot of swarfy attitudes. Ooh, I am so sorry. Just one moment. Ooh. Then the infamous sexual mutual aid tweets were made. Oh, I am so sorry. Can you um uh? I accidentally muted myself. Can you uh? Can you repeat uh? Right after you said uh, swarfy attitudes. Yeah, yeah. So, so I think that you know it, it's it's pretty apparent that the first people that were criticizing me had some pretty swarfy attitudes, and nobody really tried to hide it at first. It was pretty apparent, you know, like people would come in my mentions and they would say, well, prostitutes don't have the capability to have class consciousness or, you know, prostitutes are petty, petty bourgeois and they're class traitors and, you know, that sort of thing. Like it, it would just be a lot of like that sort of thing, which was really easy to brush off. Um, and then, you know, I would post a cute picture and it would be like, you know, someone would quote tweet it and be like, why doesn't this girl just go away? Nobody likes her. And just, you know, stuff that like had nothing to do with anything that I had actually done wrong in anyone's, mm -hmm. in anyone's mind. Um, so it was, you know, it was pretty apparent that, that there was this underlying sentiment of people just not liking me for, for doing sex work very openly. Um, and yeah, then just, you, you didn't feel, uh, uh, it was like an underlying feeling of just not wanting being, uh, not being wanted in the space. Right. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was very, it was very apparent that people didn't want me in their spaces. Um, and then I started getting like, every little thing I would do would get, you know, put under a microscope. And then when I went to Louisville, this was really exacerbated. People were questioning my finances, people felt that they were entitled to know how much money I was making, what I was spending money on, um, why I was traveling, how I was traveling why I was protesting in the places I was. Um, I got a lot of pushback for going to Louisville um, and for going to Georgia. People felt that I didn't make posts that they liked or I didn't post enough about a certain topic or um, there was a, and then there was an incident where uh, Savvy, who is the other gun girl who, you know, I think most people know about, uh, posted that I had taken sexual photos of myself at a protest and that um there's a time and a place to do that and that's just not it um <clears throat> later you know my name was said in the comments it was very obvious who who she was talking about a lot of people were arguing about me and you know a lot of people were very 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 upset with me for having supposedly done this thing um it came out that i didn't do it and she refused to take down the tweets she refused to you know acknowledge that she had said something that was not true um and then a lot of controversy i guess started piling up from there um do you know who the the gray zone news is i've heard that name before but could you give us a little rundown so the gray zone there are, let me see if i can't oh you know what i shouldn't show twitter on stream i don't know it's going to pop up um so the, the gray zone news is uh they do a lot of I, I believe they're a communist outlet um but i haven't actually read anything that they've published but um some people say that they do a lot of genocide denial um mm -hmm. i don't really know but they like to say that uh, whatever is happening with the Uyghurs in China is not really happening. So there, it's it's like you know we're in that area of the political spectrum. Oh yeah, sort of um like tanky, like Stalinist, uh, like, uh, like yeah, they're tanky. I just didn't denial. want to say they're tanky. Okay. Yeah, they're tanky. Okay, they're sure. <laughs> so, so the people whose ideology someone said in my chat, they, their ideology is basically just anti-America, right? Yes, very much so. Okay. Um. So one of their one of their reporters uh, decided when I was in Louisville that he was going to post a tweet talking about how it wasn't OK that I had a following um, and that his name is Alex Rubenstein. Um, it wasn't OK that I had a following and that it was a real disgrace to actual journalists who go out there and who try to really put themselves on the line and actually do good things. It was really, really upsetting that I was able to gain a following for just being a slut online um and it was a disgrace to journalists so yeah. you know it, it was 
all kinds of things like this started happening. I mean, at one point, someone was like, "Why? Wh how much money do you have? Why did you f take an airplane? Because I took a, an airplane flight from Texas to Georgia at one point. And, you know, there was a post that gained thousands and thousands of likes that was like, why are you flying? How much money did your ticket cost? Why didn't you spend that money on other things? You know, just like people basically nitpicking every single thing that I do. Mm -hmm. um, you know, people being upset that I had fake fingernails. Like it's it's people being upset at my appearance um so it, it it started there and then um when i got back from being in louisville i posted the sexual mutual aid tweets and that was the first time that i mean i'd gotten like shit from people but often there was a lot of pushback and people were defending me but when i posted the sexual mutual aid tweets that was the first time that it felt like um the attention that my tweets were getting was starting to travel into areas far beyond left Twitter. Yeah. So um, I, do you guys know what RadFems are? Do you know what RadFems are? Yes. Right. So for people who don't know, RadFems are TERFs and SWERFs. They call themselves radical feminists. Um, but essentially, they think that all sex work is rape. And they think that uh, trans people are not valid. And that trans women are um, actually harmful to cis women. I think one of uh, my first interactions, them. actually, with a uh, one of uh, with some of those type of people, where they said, uh, "I think anytime a black person has sex with a white person, that's rape because the white person has more social power." So um, I will have to be filing a um, uh, a police claim to at least a couple <laughs> of my girlfriends. So. Yeah, yeah, um, they're they're extremists. Um, and I think that a lot of their ideology is pretty unhinged. Um, a lot of them are upper class white women. And a lot of them are also women who live in third world countries who have um, really, really bad gender relations in their countries. And so they have these really radical perspectives. So it's really hard to talk, like just talk shit blanketly on rad films. But, mm -hmm. but anyway, um, you know, the sexual mutual aid tweets, which if you, don't know, which I think a lot of people know, <laughs> but if you don't know, it was basically me saying that, um, cause I had tweeted, Hey guys, I, I see a lot of people saying that sex work is only because of coercion and that sex work won't exist under communism. So I was like, Hey guys, I think sex work will exist under communism. And that was something I had tweeted. And a lot of people were very um, upset because they want the word work to only be used in the Marxist sense of um, labor done under a capitalist system for wages where your employer is exploiting you. So, you know, they were saying under communism, work is not, work, sex work wouldn't exist because work won't exist. So that's not going to be a thing. That's not going to be real. You're not using these terms correctly. And I was like, okay, I, I get where you're coming from. Um, I think saying sexual labor will exist in a society without hierarchy, without um, money, without wages, without bosses, without a capitalist system sounds terrible. No one wants to say the term sex labor ever. That sounds really bad, right? Yeah. So I, you know, I started I started talking to some people and people who've read more anarchist theory than me, um, people who are much more. Um, experienced in leftist circles and ideas than me. And one of the things that came up was I was like, well, if you are contributing, um, if you're contributing sexual, I guess, labor and emotional labor that's connected to, you know, relationships and intimacy and some level of sexuality, and in turn, people f are cared for and it makes your society less repressed or if you're creating sexual aids like pornography so in turn people have um, outlets for their sexuality is that not actually a form of mutual aid because the way we understand mutual aid is you know things that you do for your community that you don't necessarily expect a reciprocal action for right then and there right so i mean that that's that is an understanding of mutual aid. And so I think um, it made sense where, you know, I was like, hey, guys, does the term sexual mutual aid will exist under communism make more sense than saying sex work would? And everything was going fine. A lot of lefties were like, okay, 
I mean, silly term, but yeah, I get it. Uh, and then Radfims got a hold of my tweets. And Radfims decided that I was saying that we should have state mandated comfort women um, and that the government should decide that women should be raped by Johns uh, every day. Uh, because they were basically Radfims don't know what communism is because their whole ideology is that they hate uh, men and they hate sex workers and they hate trans people. Mm -hmm. So uh, they don't really like I don't ever see Radfims talking about economic stuff. Right. So when you say communism, they think of the USSR. Right. So they think of state capitalism. They think of like super authoritarian autocratic societies. Um, yeah, like unironically cat girl gulags, right? Like un state -mandated unironically, yeah. yes, state mandated glory holes. Yes, exactly. Um, and that's actually something that someone said. Someone was like, this is the most disgusting incel thing I've ever seen. You want state mandated glory holes. This is fucked up. And there, no amount of me being like, hey, guys, I'm an anarcho communist. <laughs> I don't think there should be a state. I don't think anyone should do anything without consent. Um, what I am saying to you guys is that I think in a society without work and without bosses that people would still of their own accord end up choosing to do you know, activities like this. I think this is what it would look like. So I do think that it's a little bit silly to argue that um, sex work is only just coercion under capitalism. I do think that there are elements of it that we should respect because there are people who willingly choose to engage in this line of work. Um, mm -hmm. And I think I... I thought that what I was saying was pretty obvious, but... Um, it turned into this terrible thing where people were basically just like, okay, well, you know, in my country, your your soldiers came during World War II and they had state mandated comfort women and that's extremely traumatic and it's very racist. And I was like, whoa, 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 hold on. Like, that's not what I'm saying. But it, it didn't matter. I um, mean, it really took on a life of its own. And there were lots of call out posts made about me. There were lots of um, people talking about how I'm a predator, how I'm an incel, how I'm for state mandated rape, um, how I'm like, just an idiot i'm a moron like you know people uh, journalists with blue checks were making memes about how i'm the i'm f such a fucking disgusting idiot like it, it was a lot um and it just grew and grew and grew and grew and grew and you know some people did try to defend me but there were people who tried to defend me who hadn't actually spoken to me about this and who weren't sex workers and who don't spend time in you know these circles and who maybe don't really read any theory or aren't familiar with terms um and it just kind of made things a little bit worse i think um yeah. could i um, and then, could i huh? hop in for just a second i wanted to yeah. um could i could i uh so I, I wanted to ask right through all of this could i ask about your uh, your mental state i know for me personally uh still uh w when i get a big amount of, of, of attention uh, I get I get like this hit of anxiety that runs through me no matter what's really happening. Um, I remember the other day, actually, Zan um, uh, shouted out my channel. And even even then, I got this massive like rush of anxiety more than anything else. Um, mm -hmm. I, I've been, and interacted with some bigger YouTubers, whether, you know, uh, whatever's happening. I'm uh, for me personally, I have a little bit of um, a risk of uh, um, what? How do I how do I say it? I'm, I'm a little risk averse sometimes. So when I have a lot of heat coming at me even when it's you know small maybe like even five people on a video or something it, it kind of you know activates that thing in me so I, I want i wanted to know could you relate to something like that and uh, could you walk us through kind of like your mental state when uh, all of this was happening with you lots of people were uh i guess misattributing what you were saying or taking you out of context how'd that feel yeah so i actually just had to log off um i, I just couldn't deal with it because it was at the point where I mean, tens of thousands of people were talking about what a stupid, disgusting human being I am and what a terrible fucking idea this was while saying that it was something else. So that's that's a level of attention that um, I've never received in my entire life. And, uh, you know, I, I've had multiple, multiple tens of thousands of followers on platforms before. So, you know, I'm, I'm used to getting a significant amount of attention, but I'm not used to, um, I'm not used to, 300,000 people seeing one of my tweets that's going very poorly. Uh, I can't begin to describe to you, I, I can't begin to make you understand the level of dread that, that comes with that. You know, people, especially seeing people that you have followed the work of for a long time and respected uh, journalists even, um, 
talking about you, getting every single detail wrong and directing hundreds of thousands of people at you. Because there are multiple accounts that have hundreds of thousands of followers that directed people at me. Um, it kind of felt like things were uh, like something was going wrong um, that you that you felt like. So you did you, you made an action, right? And it seemed like for some reason, everything's just going wrong. And you try and hold on to it, but it just keeps slipping through your fingers and it just keeps rolling yeah. and getting worse and worse. You know, I, I tried to argue with, I, I tried to like explain things and argue with people for a little bit or, or, you know, like have conversations with people. But as I started to realize that most of the people that were engaging with me didn't have any interest in anything that I actually had to say and were just coming there to get really mad and to shit talk. I just, you know, I mean, I had this pit in my stomach, my mouth was drying up, I was like having panic attacks, I was having crying fits, like, for days afterwards, I I wasn't able to get online, you know, and like, I, it, there comes a point where you've crossed a threshold, where after you've seen the 300th comment, um, just saying something vile and completely incorrect, that, you know, if you see one comment like that, it's one thing. But by the time you see the 400th, you're like, you're like having an actual panic attack when you see them. So um, uh, I, I just got, you know, I mean, I was really upset. And I, I felt, uh, I think I felt really hurt more than anything, because it just seemed like it didn't make sense why it was happening. Because I felt that I had done everything on my end to say, hey, I'm only interested in consent hey, I'm not saying what I think should happen. I'm just talking about how I think human nature is. And then by the time it was, this is racist, this is ableist, you're an incel. Like by the time that started happening, I was like, I have to step away from this um, because I'm not going to be able to function if I, if I don't just put Twitter away and step away. Definitely. So I wanted to... Um... So, I, so while, while thinking of this and thinking about um, uh, online harassment... Um... While while watching a lot of it happen to other people, there are some tendencies that I uh, see to pick up on. I want to get your uh, insight on that, maybe uh, what you've seen. Because you did mention, right, how you'll see one comment and then it'll be another person and then another person and another person. And they'll all be saying basically the same thing and all will be somewhat wrong. So obviously some mob mentality plays in there. But I think there's something else else going on at an individual level that can lead people to do something along those lines. Right. So. It's kind of the idea that everybody wants to say something, right? Everybody wants to feel like they correct, uh, they corrected you. Uh, everybody wants to, you know, uh, point and tell everybody else that uh, you know that uh, they're they're the ones that are wrong. Um, everybody thinks that they're original, and everybody wants to put you in your place for uh, for what what they see that you've done wrong. What do you think about that? Sure. I, I mean, I think that all of those things are correct. I also think that a lot of people have perceived me to be um in a much to have much more status than i actually do um like i think a lot of people think that i am that i have a lot more money than i do i've also had a lot of people um when criticizing me and when getting upset with me you know saying oh you're you're white you're attractive like you have a platform blah blah, blah whatever so i do think that there's a lot of just like bitterness and jealousy that comes into a lot of this as well um, I think it's a need to feel powerful. I think it's a need to feel like you have some sort of control over something. And I also think a lot of these people think that they're punching up at me. Yeah, I can I, I can definitely see that. So one thing that comes in there, um, maybe not like a, we've seen this with some of like the incel types and going over a lot of like really shitty uh, conservative commentary. I have noticed one thing is that they unironically think like Maslow's high. Have you seen that? Um. That like sort of like socialist picture with like the the proletariat at the bottom and it's like the police state and then uh, like the autocrats and then it's like the like the king or like the ruler or like money or whatever. It's like in, replace money like uh, uh, like do the Indiana Jones thing, switch out the money, but then put like trans people or, or women or black people there. They unironically believe that at, at, at the t upper end of upper echelon of society is these marginalized groups and i i think that what you said there was pretty apt when when you said they feel like they're punching up i think you're i think you're absolutely right they do feel like they're punching up at someone who has more status and power as you being you know conventionally attractive or uh having a lighter skin tone or being an american or whatever i mean we saw that a little bit with mel where you mentioned um online harassment and then sh they brought up you're you're white which 
I felt like was really weird. Uh, I, I, I think lots of people can, uh, can, can have the same experiences as you and you, you being white ne doesn't necessarily play into it, especially on, well, at least on your end. Yeah. So I think what a lot of people don't realize is that, um, I'm a neurodivergent chronically ill, uh, survival sex worker who like doesn't have familial support. Um, so I, I think people see me and they go, Oh, hi. It's food. It's, it's food time. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Okay. Hey, hold on. Hey, I'm on stream right now. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, ah, a woman so of culture, like edamame. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. Is this cultural appropriation? Am I allowed to eat these foods? I don't even know. No. I'm gonna be to this. <laughs> I think we'll right. be okay. At least, at least for now. Okay, good. Thank you. I don't want to see any tweets about this, guys. It's okay. I have, uh, I have enough melanin for the both of us. Okay, I'll, I'll protect you. <laughs> You'll shield me. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's, it's really unfortunate because, um. So I think that there's a time and a place like I think it is really valid to understand that, you know, white privilege is real and, mm -hmm. and it exists and it does affect things. Um, but, you know, if something really, really awful is actually happening to me and you kind of go, well, you know, you need to shut up and sit down and you need to take everyone kicking you in the face because you're white and white people need to learn to be abused, then like. That's a problem, right? Because we're supposed to be building this society where we're doing away with prejudice and where we're doing away with treating people like shit. So I get it. Like I get holding people accountable and, and letting them make, and making them acknowledge their privilege. But, you know, this is something that Mel has done to me quite a lot where when we talk, it's like, you know, she'll say things to me like, well, white people need, just need to be uncomfortable. And it's like, okay, but, yeah, but I don't need to be abused, you know? Oh no! Uh, absolutely, um, I feel that. So, uh, do you think your um, your emotions to some of the uh, harassment that came through was kind of uh, exacerbated with your seems to uh, seem to be very 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 quick ascendancy? Like you said, you went from one hundred one night to thirty thousand another night, and you're not really sure where it came from. And so, uh, you were like way in over your head, especially when it came to like the, the Twitter space, and then with with the swerfs and everything, and lot and, and lots of um anti sex. Uh, apparently, this is like a really big thing. The, the anti sex work communist people. I didn't even know that existed, but they yeah, they true. they just really hate it. It it is really interesting. Um, personally, for for me, work is anything that you put energy and time into. So it, it seems like anything under the sun there would be work. I don't think that lots of people would say like people who run Etsy shops or whatever don't do work or something or video editors. That's obviously work. You, you're going out and you're doing something. Or is for, I do photography. Um, would photography not be considered work there? I mean, it, it's, it's just a really uh, big thing. But what do you think about the, um, uh, the very quick rise and how that played into uh, how you dealt with some of this? Well, I, I think it just left me really unprepared. Um, for the spaces that I was entering, because I didn't, I, I had another Twitter account that I had used over the years, but it was just a sex worker Twitter account. Yeah. So they don't really talk, pol like a lot of sex workers just don't talk politics. Mm -hmm. um, and I was a liberal, like I'm, I'm, I'm new to leftist ideas. So I got really, um, I got introduced to the community into a lot of leftist thought through Bo of the Fifth Column. So Bo is a creator that I have a ton of respect for and that you guys should all check out if you don't know who he is. But he really pushed me, you know, I contacted him and, and we, we talked a little bit and he really pushed me to start making content through the perspective of a sex worker. So I started to do that. And at the same time, I was reading, um, you know, I was reading anarchist uh, literature and reading, reading anarchist theory. Um, and I still have a ton to learn. So I'm wandering into this sphere, one, one Twitter and two leftist thought, kind of baby stepping my way in. And then all of a sudden I had all these followers. So in people's minds, that meant that I had an enormous amount of responsibility. And I just didn't, one, I didn't know that people thought that way. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that they thought that I had to walk on eggshells and, you know, really, um, cultivate and think about and consider the impact of every single part of every single little tweet. I also didn't know that 
there's a certain amount of seriousness that's expected. Um, so, you know, I would make jokes about stuff and people would be really unhappy with me. Um, and really, really negatively interpret every single thing that I said in the worst way possible. So I think I was just really, really unprepared. Yeah. Um, makes, makes total sense. Um, in, so you, you, uh, you said something a little bit earlier. You said, um, lots of, some people were saying that you make women in leftist, leftist, you existing in leftist spaces, make other women in those, uh, similar leftist spaces more unsafe because you'd be bringing in like creepy dudes or whatever. Ooh. Is this a, is this a common tactic of, um, that people use when it comes to sex workers or women in general, when, uh, when it comes to this, like bring unwanted attention, these sorts of people, because I've, I've seen this before. Um, ContraPoints made a, uh, a video about it. I think it was her video about cringe and how you see someone, you see someone acting out or whatever. And, uh, she was talking about it from a trans person's perspective where she saw the, uh, what is it? I, I think it's the it's ma'am video. If, if you remember that, uh, yeah. Yeah. So if if you aren't acquainted with that video, basically, it's a it's a trans person. Some people would consider them non passing. And they were very, very upset that in GameStop that uh, the person was not using their correct pronouns. And they were like, you know, it's it's ma'am. And they were very upset. Right. And so lots of people were running that around and making their life uh, uh, a living hell. Um, and lots of trans people hopped onto them, hopped onto their the point and be like, hey, th they're the bad one. It's kind of like we it's kind of like how old trans people have a little bit of Blair White in them at the end of the day, you know, and on and on a um, and on a certain level uh, as a minority status. I know I've definitely felt that when I was younger, at the very least, I'll see like uh, another black kid doing being very uh, rambunctious if if we'll use that word. Uh, and uh, I'd be like, oh, make, making us all look bad. OK, now I'm going to have to do I I've seen that before. Um, do you think uh, some other women have those views towards uh, sex workers in general when it comes to other spaces? Oh, absolutely. Um, Ash Coffin did that to me. Uh, Savvy did that to me. A lot of sex workers did that to me. I've definitely seen a lot of threads about how Merrick doesn't represent us. Don't platform Merrick. Don't talk to her. She's dangerous. She makes the sex work community look bad. And I think it's a lot of, um, I'm the good one. You're right. It, it is. It's, it's, I'm the good one. Don't mm -hmm. let, you know, don't let whatever they're doing over there, uh, get, get onto us. Um, it's, it's a lot of that. Um, and I think, you know, a lot of sex workers were particularly vicious a lot of a lot of the people who like um have threatened to hurt me a lot of the people who have like dedicated entire accounts to talking shit about me like a lot of those people are sex workers hmm. that is i'm sorry about that yeah that that must be extremely <laughs> difficult to uh, uh uh to deal with there could you give us a little insight on how you how you deal with it um what you uh what you do to go through it um, you know, uh, some, some tactics that some people could take away from, from that in particular. So for the first, I don't know, four months, uh, I wasn't dealing with it. I was just reacting to it. Mm -hmm. And that was just the worst sort of emotional and mental spiraling. Um, and I, you know, I feel like I was talking about it publicly and I was lashing out at people. And I, I, you know, I was trying to keep this to a minimum and trying to keep my shit together um, and, you know, feeling like I was just falling apart at the seams and, and feeling like every single thing I said and did on Twitter was under a magnifying glass. Um, and I wasn't dealing with it to the point where whenever the dog pill incident happened, I decided I was going to kill myself. And um, that's ridiculous because that's a tweet. <laughs> you know, like it's absolutely ridiculous that I was like going to kill myself over a tweet. So um finally I felt like I was losing my mind. Um it got to the point where I was just like, all of these people are right. I'm a terrible person, I'm a racist, I'm a turf. Uh, I have internalized misogyny. I'm an incel. Like, just, I'm married. <laughs> I produce pornographic content. I have other partners. Like, I was like, I'm an incel. Internalized <laughs> incelism. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the polyamorous married incel life. Um, so, so I was like, this is insane. Like, I was starting to be like, it, you know, it was really making me think that, um, that I was an awful evil person and so 
I, I what, what, what a decent way to describe it would that be kind of like mass um uh mass abusive sort of uh tendencies like from from like a group mentality scale so the sort of like gaslighting uh, uh those sorts of things making you feel making you feel bad for things that uh, you've done that may not have been done um not being able to talk to uh, them because obviously you can't talk to every single person every single person thinks they have something to say every single person thinks that they're saying something different when you know obviously they're all saying that basically that the exact same thing you can't have a conversation with everyone that's just impossible so yeah. you you there's basically um you have to make like big general statements uh when it comes to this and it's never going to please ev everyone what do you think about that it, well it's it's never going to please everyone and also you you have to understand that like when i was accused of um when savvy accused me of sexual harassment because i'm sure some of you will know about that but around the time that the sexual mutual aid happened, she popped on top of that and she was like, Merrick shouldn't be talking about consent because I heard a noise when I was pretending to be asleep that, you know, I didn't like and uh, it didn't traumatize me, but I have PTSD. So this was sexual harassment. So mm -hmm. when that happened, no amount of me being like, here is a collage of screenshots that show this a history of this girl lying about me, being confronted with the fact that she lied about me, and then refusing to retract it until I did the thing she wanted. Literally holding her social capital over my head and being like, do what I want or I'm going to continue to smear you. So that literally happened. And I released a collage of screenshots showing this and me being like, hey guys, maybe don't believe what this person is saying about me when this literally happened a week ago and she's just doing the same thing. So like I released all these screenshots and people would be like, that didn't happen, that didn't happen. And I'd be like, here's the image. So like there's there's no amount of arguing with people, you know, um, like also people will show, you know, screenshots of my tweets out of context about the Vosh thing and I'll pull up, I'll literally quote tweet another tweet of mine that is in full context and show them the full thread and be like, here's why what you're saying about me is, um, you know, wrong and made up and not actually the situation. And people would be like, whatever, fuck you, I don't care. You know, I don't yeah. care what the context is. So what I had to realize was that um, there is no arguing with people who, when you're like, hey, this is not the context, they go, I don't care about the context, I fucking hate you. Like, there's no arguing with people like that, right? So yeah. um, you just have to sort of disengage with that for your own mental health. And a couple of weeks ago, do you know uh, Dario? Oh, yeah. Oh, is that is that a sore spot? No, he, um... I, I, I came into uh, contact with Dario when he was saying that liberals are also should be considered with leftists because they're both like left wing. It was a very interesting article. He's um he's a very interesting character in the uh, small uh, left tube mythos. I'll tell you that much. He'll uh, he'll be remembered. <laughs> OK, well, uh, I don't I don't really know that much about him. I, I, I recently discovered his presence. Um, I'm actually going to be talking to him tomorrow, so we'll see how that goes. But um, he he showed me, he was like, hey, if you go into your settings for your notifications, nobody tells you this. You can make it to where you can't see notifications from people who don't have a profile picture, people who haven't verified their phone number, people who haven't verified their email, people who you don't follow, people who don't follow you. Um, you, can, you can just remove all of these notifications. Yep. And so it got to the point after, um, after the dog pill incident, um and me like thinking i was gonna break sobriety because i've been sober for like going on nine months now and I'm i was very like proud of you i mean I, oh, th congratulations yeah. I, that that is so that is so good i i know it's definitely really hard for people i i know people in my life and you know uh uh people who i've who i've known and their family members struggling with um lots of uh lots of addiction problems so that that's amazing you should be, be extremely proud of yourself that's very hard thank you but i was like I was getting to this point where um, I wouldn't eat. Uh, I'm so I'm, I'm supposed to gain weight for a surgery right now. I have to gain 15 pounds. I've actually lost six pounds. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't eating um, and I wasn't getting out of bed. I didn't make a YouTube channel or I didn't make a YouTube video for like three, two, two and a half months. Um, I just stopped creating content. Uh, I didn't. I didn't want to get out of bed. I wasn't brushing my hair. I wasn't eating. I uh, 
was thinking about breaking sobriety. I was thinking about killing myself. And I was just like, I have to do something different. And, and you know, people would be like, well, just get off Twitter. Just, just you know, put, put, shut your phone off, t- close your eyes, whatever. It's not real. Yeah, just and turn it's, the screen off. It's, it's turn still the screen there. off. Yeah. But it's like, well, it, it's still there. And also people constantly tag me and post to people talking shit about me. I just see them in the wild scrolling on my timeline. Um, people like to message me. So I, I closed my inbox. Um, and... Um, I turned off all of my notification settings, all of them. So now I think I can only see tweets from people that I follow um, or people that follow me. Mm-hmm. Well, it's one of those, but I just had to, I had to like really, really insulate myself and really protect myself. And I think that when that, I, I've also blocked probably, I mean, maybe thousands of people at this point. Um, and I also preemptively block a lot of people now too. Um, whenever something starts to get crazy, if I, people start to ratio me or if people are like quote tweeting me like crazy, I'll give the phone to my husband. I'll have him go through and I'll have him block people. So I have someone else look at it instead of me. Um, I've just taken so many steps to like protect myself and to protect my, my mental health. And a lot of people are, you know, have gotten mad at me and they're like, well, you can't just block people because then you can't take any accountability. And it's like, well, if I see anything that's a lie about me at this point, or if I see anyone um, saying that I did this crazy thing that I didn't, it like sends me into a panic spiral just because I've had so fucking much of it happen to me. Like that threshold has been crossed where I just can't deal with it anymore. Definitely. Um, I think I think the idea of going in and blocking those sort of like weirdo accounts because people love to um, to uh, to talk shit on their on their alts and stuff. So so it won't be brought back to them if, if things go bad. You know, they're they're detached from the bomb there. Um, yeah. So actually, the idea of having someone else go through some pretty bad tweets or whatever or or clean out your social uh, your social media. That's actually something that I've done. And, and I really would recommend if you guys have have something that you need to take off. I, I think that's going to be re- that, that's a really good idea. I remember um, in, in one of my last relationships, some some things went sour afterwards and some pretty, you know, very untrue, very uh, uh, upsetting things happened, uh, you know, in, in the aftermath of that. Maybe I'll go through that uh, at another day. But I, I actually was in a uh, Skype call with my one of my friends and I wanted to. So at this point, it's been maybe five months since I've been on any social media. Well, my, my Twitter uh, in particular, I didn't want to go through and unadd people and and uh, delete tweets, you know, uh, uh, old stuff to uh, just just clean out to, to restart. Right. So uh, what I basically did is uh, I handed over my uh, my Twitter to my friend. I was like, hey, here's the uh, here's the email. <laughs> here's the login. Just go in anything related to like these three people or these four or five people. Just delete it. Take take it away. And that was so much, so much easier to um, uh, to to get back on. So that, that was a really great idea. I want to drag this a little bit over to um, to draw some parallels to Twitch. Now, um, you, you've experienced mass harassment. Um, there are other people who have experienced mass, mass harassment that I know of in particular, uh, at, at least on the Twitch community. Um, so uh, some of those people would be Alinity, if if you remember uh, Alinity or, or or if you've heard of her. Uh, I know of her. For, yes. Yeah. You, you probably know of her from people, you know, talking shit on her probably, right? Yep. Yeah. Definitely. She yep. threw her cat or something. Yeah, it was. So. So what? There were two cat incidents or like three um, cat incidents, I think in particular, I think she was like drunk or something and she tried to climb her cat tree and then her cat like jumped off the cat tree. Um, her cat was like climbing on her keyboard, I think, when she was uh, playing CSGO. She like just tossed the cat over her head, kind of like that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, and then the, I th- the cats, they land well. Yeah. And then um, she, uh, what was it? She uh, drunk vodka and then she like tried to kiss the cat and the cat like licked her mouth and the cat. And the cat was like freaking out for a second, just like licking around. So this this spiraled into something so big that literally anything that happens on on Twitch now, you'll find you can probably a uh, name search in the comment section. Some random person gets banned for, I don't know, uh, like uh, uh, like uh, like uh, driving like concrete nails through their dick when they thought that uh their their camera was off or something and they get banned for it and um like slasher makes a tweet about it or something and and people will be like well hmm he gets banned for this but alinity is still live on twitch dudes will unironically be like my whore ex-wife took the kids from me and i have no uh I have no custody, but Alinity is still live on Twitch. On a, this is she. She's in their head like this. It's pretty incredible. Um, it's it's pretty wild, right? And I it 
it got so big she she um she talked about uh harassment as well with i believe dr k um and she even had seat like uh my bad i was gonna say cps she had um animal animal protective services even come by and like stream it and everything and talk about uh everything that they, that they talked about and they found like no no harm was happening but people will always still call her a um like in a, like an animal abuser they think they have like a like uh like a cat mass grave in her backyard or something it's 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 some pretty wild stuff and um uh Reckful as well he got a little bit of uh harassment but he had he was pretty uh neurodivergent we can't you know ascribe everything uh to uh, to harassment online but he was a very massive streamer byron um he um he uh he he took his own life not too long ago he tweeted um proposing to the girl online right Yes, he was the one who he was having an, an episode. He was mm -hmm. uh, uh, manically tweeting and people were just cracking oh. jokes on him. You know, uh, oh, well, you know, what the fuck are you doing, dude? Get your shit together. Just no sympathy whatsoever for the guy who's having like a wild an episode. Actual, right like now. mental yeah. health crisis. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he's having a mental health crisis and they're just sending him, uh, uh, you know, Pepe mods, you know? And yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of cruelty. There's a lot of abject cruelty, and and for a community that talks so much about protecting minorities and caring about mental health, um, the amount of people that when I've been like, you know, hey, I, I, it got so bad that I wanted to kill myself. It got so bad that I wanted to break edge. The amount of people that have just been like, shut up and delete your account, fuck you, bitch. Like 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 Marxist Leninists will tweet shit like that at me, mm -hmm. and it's just like cool you know or like well i'll be like you know hey I, i've wanted to kill myself and and uh people tried to dox me people tried to get my husband to divorce me um after the savvy thing people tried to get my husband to divorce me people messaged my husband and they were like um you know your your whore wife was uh sucking someone else's dick in a hotel room and you know without you and she was cheating on you and you should fucking leave her skin like just like saying horrible horrible things right they found him they found who he was and they would message him and say shit like that and so when i talk about things like that you know um i've actually had people be like uh just so you know being held accountable isn't harassment and it's like i just told you that people inbox me telling me to drink bleach or to slit my wrist and then I've still had like just straight up leftists be like, um, that's not harassment. That's being held accountable. Yeah. So that's, that's absolutely not being held I, accountable. That's just yeah. cruelty. Everybody, lots of people want to feel like they can just, you know, like basically like online corporal punishment, just like give you, give you a slap across the face. Like, what are you doing here? Yep. And it may make themselves feel good or something uh, along those lines. One thing that I want to um, uh, uh, post to you so far is with, uh, have you gone on to talk about uh, harassment a little bit more? And if you have, and I know you haven't been in the space too long, but in the time that you have been, have you seen any any changes, more people speaking up about it? Um, I have I have gone on to um, a, do you know Demon Mama? Yes. So I went on to Demon Mama's channel and I talked about. <clears throat> everything that's happened, all of the controversies, anytime anyone's gotten mad at me from start to finish, I talked about the whole thing. Um, and then I also talked about the savvy incident on Xander's channel. And I've made tweets here and there talking about it. But this is the first time that I've ever sat down and talked specifically about harassment in like a one on one conversation. Um, have I seen more people talking about it? I think of as it's gone on and as I've been able to explain every situation and give my side of everything that's happened and, you know, show some proof and maybe tell some people, point out some things that uh, other creators have said and done that was wrong. The people who are still with me have been, you know, come around and I've had a couple of people be like, wow, this looks like an actual witch hunt. Um, but mm -hmm. it seems like... There are a couple of people on Twitter that are talking about it, but overall, a lot of people seem to think that it's really not that big of a deal. Yeah, um, I think the same would be for the for the Twitch community. After after Etika's passing, after Recful's passing, after uh, ferociously fer ferocious stuff. I'm not sure if you heard of ferocious stuff. She was part of the uh, uh, so. Well, let, let me acquaint you to her story, at least a little bit of it. Um, as far as I know, it, it, it is actually a pretty sad story. So Frosha Steph, um, I believe she was a Heroes of the Storm player, pro player for a little while ago. She wrote how um, she wrote about how uh, uh, voice channels can be pretty bad for people with uh, non-standard oh, voices. Yeah, I hear that. Cal. Yeah, a oh, hundred uh, percent. You know, Especially women. If you're, if you're yeah. Yep. If you're femme or if you sound 
black or whatever or you know really yeah Ooh. oh oh no yeah yeah definitely they'll they'll um you'll you'll just get the jokes and even and even the dudes who are like trying to make fun of the jokes you you've heard it uh every single time you open your mouth when you're when you're in a l- new lobby it's a lot of stuff so basically she wrote how um just adding voice channels wouldn't be necessarily good uh posed a few things posed maybe not even adding them at all to heroes of the storm um and that was that was a little story a while ago when it came back into the focus when she was added to the twitch safety council after after uh oh. rape yeah yeah after dear, rape gate your girl yeah dear girl yep you may know her as dear girl um, girl. Yeah, yeah. Where where she was like being being pet and neighing or whatever. Which like on, on that's screen. not yeah. my thing, but whatever. Yeah, that's yeah, what, like, yeah, whatever. Like lots do of what they want to do. absolutely. So she was uh she was faced with a whole lot of um uh, attacks, being trans, being woman, you know, all of these sorts of things after being put on the Twitch you no know, Health and Safety Council, and um to to this very day she even still uh still has to deal with I think almost every time she tweets somebody sending her like a dear uh like a dead deer or a deer being gutted or something or or somebody holding up like a trophy dead deer with her with her face on it and being like it's hunting season boys you know every single yep. time so let oh, this yeah. yeah so um after after a lot of those incidents twitch is you know we 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 see now the ramifications of how the community has reacted with them banning like incel and virgin and stuff uh how how, how that's come off on on Twitch is trying to uh, do something about that. Um, there was a big push for maybe a week for people to uh, talk about uh, online harassment and stop harassing people as much and uh, like wanting to change the community. Even the live stream fails, which is a, a bastion of debauchery um, on that like <laughs> on that Reddit. Yeah. If you've ever been there, it, they're they're te- listen no no smoke, but like a lot of those dudes are pretty bad. Um, but you know even they had some really nice soliloquies to write about Recful or 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 Etika and how we need to change but there there's been movements in the community but really not as fast as a lot of people have wanted and it's still hurting a lot of people so what do you think about that and uh one more thing how do you believe we can change people's minds and what can we do I think that the more that we I mean yeah more, more of us need to be talking about it but it's hard when you are the person who is uh, on the receiving end of it, because the more you talk about it, the more you invite it, mm-hmm. um, which is unfortunate. And, you know, that's not to say that the more you talk about it, the more you deserve it. But the more you talk about it, the more you create opportunities um, for people who don't like you to talk about the incidences that people um use as excuses to harass you, thus starting fresh new waves of harassment and people being like, well, you know, people telling you you deserve it essentially and justifying it um, and, you know, downplaying it. That's, oh my gosh, who is that behind you? <laughs> it's it's Boo. Yeah, we love Boo. He's um he's basically a, a, the, the star of the show, Um, you know, right? Uh, and I follow him right after that. People love Boo. Uh, we we even have a thing on our stream where if you pay enough uh, uh points you can give him a treat so i always keep a uh, keep treats for him he's a yeah he, he's a good boy he's about a what like three years old i think pitbull husky mix um oh, real, real good boy yeah we love him okay anyway um yeah. it's hard when you are on the receiving end of it because one you don't want to open these conversations back up mm-hmm. and two um you don't want to be the person that's like woe is me poor me this happened to me 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 this 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 everyone feel bad for me like like you don't want to be that person you know yeah. um so it's it's you're not incentivized and you're certainly not rewarded for talking about it um Definitely. so i think that you know we we need more people who are willing to um step up when they see it happening to other people and this is something that's I understand why people don't do it because it's brought me a lot of heat too. Um, I, I will, if I see that someone is being mischaracterized by a lot of people, or if I see that people are being way unnecessarily harsh or overreacting for something, for someone that I know, um, I will step in. And that has um, brought me nothing but more punishment. Mm-hmm. And <clears throat> I understand why people don't want to do it, but I think that there comes a certain time where. Um, you know, we could use a little bit of courage every once in a while. 
Yeah. And I know that that's a hard ask of people, but you know, if, if you see someone that, that you care about or that you respect uh, being slandered, it would probably, if you have it in you, you know, it, it would probably be really appreciated by that person for you to say something or for to, you to correct the record. Um, I also think that there is going to be people who like the harassment and who get off on it. Um, it makes them feel big. It makes them feel strong. Sometimes it's actually a sexual thing. You know, there's, there's yeah, we all, all kinds of socialism. I don't, yes. Yeah. Uh, he just cash shot me yesterday, actually. Again? But, um, yeah. Oh yeah. He sends me money, okay. but, um, he's not even harassing. He's just like being goofy. He's more corny than he is aggressive. But, you know, there's always going to be, like, 15-year-olds whose mom just took their Xbox away for a week who are going to enjoy going online and saying that I have the worst tit job in the world and that I'm a dumb asshole who's never read Marx, you know? Like, there's, <laughs> those people are always going to exist. And no amount of um, begging people to have critical thinking skills and empathy is going to change some people. So I, I do think that, you know, um, a lot of, I think a lot of the anger that we see comes from the fact that we live in a fucking dystopia. And I do think that that's something that we have to understand too. Um, no matter how much we want to scream, be nice into the void, a lot of people are suffering and a lot of people don't, it's hard to be nice when you're suffering. You, you got to stand up and, and make a change. You don't want to be a part of the bystander effect. Right. Um, and, 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 and what you said about the people who are receiving the attacks necessarily aren't necessarily, uh, are, are really aren't, aren't uh, rewarded for speaking up against it. Uh, a nice parallel that I think of is a lot of marginalized communities. When people are speaking up on their behalf who aren't in the community, it sometimes for, you know, horrible reasons, but sometimes it's taken as more seriously. I know this happened a lot during the, um, during the, uh, um, what is it? The, uh, the civil rights protest. Um, it's happening a little bit now with, a, you know, basically a new civil rights protest. But, you know, the right loves to spin that as, oh, look at all these white people trying to stand up for black, you know, just, you know, reusing that old right wing reactionary language. Um, uh, so I want to hit you with one more thing. OK, there's a little little tangent, but I I really appreciate your time. So one of my chatters. All right. Her name is Kat. We love Kat here. But I, I expressed probably one of my only hot takes. I, I would guess earlier in this, uh, earlier in this interview, you mentioned online girlfriend, right? Type like type aesthetic. Um, mm -hmm. I brought up one time how, uh, we're talking about parasocial relationships and, uh, I'm not a sex worker personally. You know, I think some people could probably suss that out. Um, what do you think about parasocial relationships as it pertains to uh, uh, sex workers? I'm not sure if it, how how much different it is, but when I think of them, not not they're not necessarily sex workers, but uh, if, if you know you know mukbangs, um, how those basically originated was in South Korea and in East Asia. You know their their populations are dying uh, um, and everything. Their their work life is really bad. They uh, don't have much uh, dating culture, so people are staying with their parents longer. People aren't uh, going out and seeing each other more. So their birth rate are declining and uh, lots of people are very lonely. So uh, so mukbangs kind of came into that void where people are streaming and eating. So early in the morning when you're not uh, before you go to work, you can feel like you're eating with somebody and you're talking with somebody so you don't feel so alone. Um, obviously, I, I would say a massive parasocial relationship would be there. For lots of guys, um, uh, when it comes to toxic masculinity, they've been uh, they've been conditioned to uh, to know that you know your worth can be uh, derived by how many women like you, basically. And for for lots of guys, uh, that's that's a massive gender crisis uh, in and of itself. So lots of lots of dudes could sometimes turn to uh, turn to sex work when they feel inadequate, something along those lines. So I'd just like to get your your insight there. Where if you've seen anything when it comes to parasocial relationships um, in in your line of work or people that you know. Yeah, so so this is something that um, people get really, really upset about and they say that I'm um, exploiting men because you know they're lonely and I provide uh, a sexual aid, which is pornography, and you can you can message me on OnlyFans. Um, 
may or may not respond to you. Uh, I try to respond to most people. Um, I don't really... So I think there's a huge difference between making POV, I'm your girlfriend, and then saying something fucking ridiculous that's obviously a joke. I think there's a huge difference between that and um, actually talking to someone in in their DMs like you um, really care about them and you guys have a great relationship when you don't. Mm -hmm. Um, And there's definitely people that um, will say that from time to time will send me messages that I think cross the line. Um, And I do believe that as someone who is um, a content creator and as someone who does work in the sex industry, um, even though it might make me less money, I do think that there is a degree of responsibility in setting boundaries with people. Um, I don't think it's that hard. And now are some people or some men going to not respond well to boundaries? Yeah, some men are not, but you still have a responsibility to set those. with you that parasocial relationships are very much a real thing however um i don't necessarily think that they always have to be bad and i think that you can set uh reasonable and responsible limits on them okay sounds sounds perfectly great to me um i i'd love to direct you someone in my chat i don't know the story so i i feel uncomfortable bringing it up there's a streamer named miss bevin uh, spelled uh M-I-S-S-B-E-H-A-V-I-N. Apparently, they were uh, temporarily banned. They, they had a big um, um, thing happen. Apparently, they're also a sex worker, and they're experiencing mm-hmm. some harassment. So if, if you'd love to look into that story, maybe talk to them or something, I, I'd just love to send you that way. But um, I, I, for, for me, I just... I just can't really talk about that here. So since I don't know the story, it it appears to be really new. But I just like to say thank you so much for sharing um, all of that with us. Thank you so much for for joining me on the stream today. It's it's a really good topic that I think a lot more people should be talking about. And this was absolutely fantastic uh, to be um, to be here with you today. So thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much for having me on. I really appreciate that. Yeah, no problem. Uh, Anything you want to ask me or anything? No, I'm good. All right. Sounds great. I hope you have a great day. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. You too. All right. What an absolutely fun time. That was great.